is it safe to say the Knicks will re-sign Mitchell Robinson after not trading him at the deadline? What I think on that is, and I'm not sure about anything, I don't know anything about their plans right now for Mitchell Robinson, but what I think is if you have Mitchell Robinson and you, you know more about him than any other team in the league, right, if you're the Knicks, and so you know his value, and I would assume – you have a pretty good idea of what other teams with cap space, like the Pistons, let's say, would offer Mitchell Robinson in free agency. And so I think you base your actions at the trade deadline around that maybe. So you know there's a number that you think a team might offer him in the summer. You say to yourself, if I'm going to match that, uh, probably I won't trade him. Um, or if I'm going to look to sign and trade him at that number, I'm not going to trade him now. So I think those are the two avenues to me that, that make the most sense now moving forward. Either the Knicks plan to re-sign them and they have a number they're comfortable with, or they have, they've had conversations about a sign and trade, and that's why they didn't move off of him now. If his if his representation is like we want, you know, the Jared Allen contract, um, would I would I <laughs> want to fork that over? Not not necessarily, right? Um, Mitch, Mitch, I, I, and look, I love Mitch, very talented player. We've seen the highs are so high, but we've also seen a little bit of inconsistent, you know, even against when he goes against a stretch five, for instance, um, are there durability concerns, conditioning, those sorts of things. Um, so I think the number has to be right. That said, um, I, I think, you know, there's probably a number that they could get to. And if we, if anything, you know, exists that we learned from last summer, it's that this, this front office is willing to go maybe a little bit higher then what would what would you think would be like absolute fair value? You know, Fournier is Fournier, I don't know, 13, 14 million dollars a year player. Okay, they gave him, you know, 18 million dollars a year. Um, so I think they'll go a little higher on Mitch. The the thing that's interesting to me is, you know, he could still be signed to an extension. He could be signed to an extension right now. If well, look, I, I'd love to keep Mitch, you know, and, and as John said, it's definitely depending on the price, but I think he, he brings so much value to this team. Last night they had 17 offensive rebound. Mitch accounted for eight, and that's coming off of the, the, the back injury. Still looked like he was laboring a little bit out there, but his activity around the rim, you know, just can't be denied. Leading the league again in, in block percentage and in offensive rebounding percentage. And all of this is just based off, off of his raw talent. You know, we still don't have a consistent playmaker, a point guard that can really uh, activate him and, and really get him some more points around the rim. He can be a double-double guy if we get a more reliable option there. So I think I, I would definitely look to re-sign Mitch. The Noel contract was definitely a mistake. Um, you certainly don't want to allocate a ton of your assets in, in in your bigs and especially your backup bigs. So I hope they can, you know, get from out under that Noel contract. But I would definitely look to bring Mitch back, sign him to a deal, and, and down the road, if there's a sign and trade opportunity to again improve this team then then you look into it but there's no question that uh that mitch can help this team